Good day everyone, my name is Konstantin Krichtig from the Medical University of Vienna and member of the Young Acker Group of the ESC. And I'm standing here at the ESC conference in London, UK with uh, Dr. Salim Hayek from the Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And he just presented a very exciting abstract on depression and angina pain. Dr. Hayek, could you please summarize your main findings in a few sentences for our audience? Konstantin, it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank the ESC for this opportunity and thank the viewers for their time. Um, I presented findings on the relationship between chest pain and depression in patients with heart disease. I arrived to three conclusions. Number one, the relationship between chest pain and angina frequency was not dependent on underlying coronary artery disease severity. Subjects with or without obstructive heart disease, if they had more, more depressive symptoms, they had worse angina frequency. Even in subjects who had a Jensini score of zero, i.e. no discernible atherosclerosis on angiogram, also had worse angina frequency as determined by the Seattle Angina Questionnaire uh, when they had higher depressive symptoms by PHQ9. Second, at follow-up, Patients who had decrease in depressive symptoms had improvement in their angina frequency. Mm -hmm. That was independent of whether they were revascularized or not. Lastly, very important point, we looked at the patients who had depression and underwent revascularization at enrollment, and we found that at follow-up, these subjects did not have an improvement in their chest pain. That was at one-year follow-up. Okay, thank you very much. Um, how did you come up with the study? Is this something you've seen frequently in your clinical routine? I regularly see patients with depression in my cardiology clinic. They're often uh, misdiagnosed, and the way they present is uh, they often have chest pain, uh, they're complaining of recurrent pain despite having recent revascularization or underwent a full workup, including stress tests and uh, angiograms, which are negative. And the moment I ask them, how's your sleep at night? Some of them would break down and cry, and we would end up segueing into uh, depression symptoms, and many of them would be severely depressed, but would not be diagnosed. And that's where I thought about examining uh, this, re this relationship in the Emory Cardiovascular Biobank. Uh, your follow-up data is exciting, and you show that a decrease in depressive symptoms was associated with a decreased angina uh, pain frequency. Was this somehow associated to um, antidepressant medication, or maybe even a better anti antigenal treatment? Unfortunately, the study design did not allow us to examine that question okay. because we do not know post-enrollment whether these patients were started on antidepressants or went to see a psychiatrist. But I can tell you this, uh, whether they were on antidepressants or not did not affect the relationship between depressive symptoms and angina frequency at enrollment nor at follow-up. And are you going to or have you already implemented uh, this depression score into your daily clinical routine? And if so, do you start patients on antidepressants or refer them to um, a psychiatrist? Screening for depression is recommended by the ESC. I do screen for depression at every new patient visit as well as every yearly visit for patients. And um, I, do sc I do initiate antidepressive treatment myself and refer to psychiatrists. Um, it's something I've implemented in my clinic on a regular basis given um, the percentage of subjects, a large, num large number of patients who um, have depression. And your data on the, as, that the association between depression and angina pain frequency was independent on whether patients were intervened or not is quite intriguing. So would you now refrain from intervening a depressive patient uh, given uh, the fact that it was, would be for uh, symptom relief uh, and not for um, prognosis outcome? The short answer to this question is no. There is overwhelming evidence for the benefit of PCI in subjects who already were on optimal medical management and are, have known heart disease uh, for relief of their symptoms. However, that does not mean that we should not screen for depression because uh, the, our study are suggestive of a possible causal relationship but do not prove it. We need more studies to uh, determine whether revascularization affects depression and whether antidepressant medications actually improve chest pain. Okay, thank you for sharing your exciting data with us. Thank, thank you, you for, for having watching. Me. Bye.